and it looks like there we go. Okay, so I wanted to show you this um, oh second assignment. <laughs> looks exciting or scary, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, it's a little bit hard to see what's going on, but I have eight LEDs hooked up on the side. You know, we just did this with two of them, turned them on and off, and um, we're going to be hooking up eight of them. So the wiring on this project is pretty simple. Um, the the pins are up here. I just pulled it from the top of the Arduino. Remember, you could also come from this side if you wanted to stretch some long wires over there. These were closer. They're all hooked in together underneath this breadboard. So um, what we did is I simply hooked up pin number one. You notice there's a pin zero on here. Um, pin zero and pin one are used for transmitting and receiving data. So typically, we don't like to use those in projects because um, sometimes it'll interfere with the type of data you're trying to get if there's a LED hooked in the line. Since this is all digital circuitry, it doesn't really matter for us. And also we wanted to use pins one through eight to correspond to LEDs one through eight. And all we did is basically took from D1 over here, the digital pin one, and ran it to the first LED. And then we took pin two, ran it to the second one, pin three to the third, and we hooked them all up, all eight of them. Um, one thing I'll point out to you that it has on the circuit board, as opposed to if it's loose parts, you'll see them talk about a little resistor. And right next to the LED is this little tiny part on the board, and I probably can't even see it in here. But if you look down on this side, but let me make this stop flashing for a second. If you look down on this side of the um, LEDs, there's a little part on the board, same here, same with the ones you plugged in down here. There's a little tiny chip, which is a surface mounted resistor. This part is the same as these, and this is what you would use if you have a loose parts collection, or if we breadboard these in the future, you'll have parts that you can actually physically touch and deal with, because these are just super small and they're placed by machine and soldered by machine. So. On the Duino kit, what we did is we built in that resistor to all of these LEDs. Um, if you hook them straight up to your Arduino, if you wire them up, they'll be really super bright and they won't last for very long. You'll basically burn them out. Most of these LEDs work off of about three volts and your Arduino supplies five volts out. So um, you need to put a little resistor in there and that slows the current down. It drops the voltage so you don't burn your LEDs out. One thing they did on this Duino kit is all of the LEDs up here, everything that's attached, all these LEDs have built in resistors, so you're not going to fry them. So that just is a little safeguard that'll protect you. But if you're building it on the breadboard or if you're doing it with loose parts or soldering it up, you're going to need to add in the resistor. And you will see that in this documentation. Let me just jump down to here. Um, oop. Wrong screen. Okay. If I jump down here on lesson two, we call this flowing LEDs. I am nicknamed it turn signals because this is a animation that you see in the new modern cars. They have all these LED bulbs in the brake lights. That's why they're super bright. Sometimes you see a couple of them that have burnt out in the tail light. But sometimes um, some of the vehicles, when you like turn left or turn right, it shows the LED scrolling back and forth in the proper direction. So um, we nicknamed it turn signal. Um, the main thing we want to understand about this is we're going to use a special statement in here called a loop statement or a for statement. Um, this for statement has three parts to it. There's something that initializes or declares your variable. So we're usually going to use X as a counter. Sometimes I use I or you can put any number in there. Um, I think in our code we actually used LED pin as a number. It has a condition statement, which in this example says X is less than 100. And then it has a statement that's an increment, which means how much you count by. Um, in coding in JavaScript and C++, all sorts of languages, for some reason, back in the days of basic programming, you put x equals x plus 1. And that's how you added 1 to it each time. And I guess I got tired of typing that statement. So to add a value, you simply type x plus plus. 
If you type in x minus minus, it will subtract one each time. I don't know why that syntax is, but that's the way it works. And what happens is when you run this statement, when you put the statement in your code, here's your curly braces. Your curly braces are going to start and stop, and everything that it does in those curly braces, it's going to do until this counter reaches that number. So let me get back to that in a second. I'll pull up the actual code that we're working on. Um, this is the um, building the circuit. If you have the breadboard and the loose parts, these resistors here are built into the Duino kit, so you don't need to worry about those. Um, but if you're building it with something else, you'll have to do that. So I, I put in general wiring on here. You're hooking Arduino pin one to an LED positive and then different LED, and you're just doing this for eight of them. And now I want to just look at the code briefly to show you what's going on here. Um, one thing I like to do on all of my programs, and when you modify programs and do this, is you can put a comment block which means if you start it with a backslash and an asterisk, everything after that is a comment. It won't run. So you start it with asterisk or backslash asterisk. Anything you type in there is good until you end it with a asterisk backslash. Is that a backslash or forward slash? I guess that's a forward. And this will end your comment section. So anything in here, the Arduino does nothing with it. It's just put in there so you can know what's going on. And then in here, we have our two main parts of a program. Almost every Arduino is built up with two main loops. You have one called setup. And after we type setup and the double parentheses, we'll show you what those parentheses are for in a few lessons. It has a curly brace to open and a curly brace to close it. Um, Inside this set of curly braces, we have our for statement. And what we did is we assigned a variable. Instead of using x, we gave it a name that made sense. We put LED pin, and we started it with the number 1. And here our condition says, if LED pin is less than or equal to 8, we're going to keep doing this loop. And then it says, add 1 to LED pin. So what it does, it's going to run everything in this loop. And now the only thing we have in this loop here is declaring a pin mode as an output. And I think you remember we did that in the first lesson where we had to say LED pin and we gave it a number or we gave it the variable. Well, what this is going to do is it's going to declare all eight of these pins as an output. So it's going to go through and say LED pin one is an output. It's going to loop and say LED pin two is an output. LED pin three is an output. And it's going to do that eight times. Um, if you did not have this loop command, you would have to type in eight statements. Heaven forbid you have 100 LEDs on here, because you'd have to type the same line 100 times. So that's going to just take care of the initializing your LED pins as an output, which means you're sending data out or electricity out of the pins. Um, and we'll talk more about that as we get into input and output types of data in the near future. And then I'll just show you this loop command, which starts here, ends way down here, and this does two different things. You'll notice we have our we declared our variable again because we declared it up here, but it will not operate or it won't remember that if it's in a different um, function. These these loop commands that we're doing or these things are called functions. Um, we have a void loop. I don't know why they started with the word void. That would be a great question to have some programmer answer. Um, setup makes sense. It sets up your stuff and declares variables. It runs at one time. The loop, I don't know why it's void loop, but this loop, it will do over and over and over and over. So what we did in this loop is we declared a variable, LED pin, and since this counter works real nice, we assigned it to start at 1 and go up until it's equal to 8. It's less than or equal to 8. And we're going to add 1 to it each time. And what we're doing here is we're telling it to take that digital pin, which are the pins 1 through 13 are all digital. Digital write, we're telling it to write or send data out to it, the pin number, and we're turning it on. 
remember this is going to change every time it loops. So when it loops the first time it'll say pin number one is high, pin number two is high, pin number three is on, pin number four is on, pin number five is on, six is on, seven is on, eight is on, and we put a little delay factor in there. So it'll turn on light one, LED two, LED three, LED, all the way up to LED number eight. Then once this reaches eight, it says, okay, we're gonna exit out of this loop and it comes down here and it enters this loop. And this is almost the same identical code, except you notice here on the digital right, it's taking that same LED pin number, which is gonna range from one to eight, depending on how the loop counts, and it's gonna turn it low and it turns it off. And then it delays, it'll turn the next one off, delay, turn it off, and then when it's done, it goes back up to the beginning. So what happens is you are able to successfully turn, let me see if I can pull this back up. You're able to turn your LEDs on and off in a sequence with very few lines of code. If you were trying to turn on all eight of them, you'd have to declare them all, you'd have to turn them all on, then you have to turn them all off one by one. And with this loop statement that we created, this for statement, um, it's running through the numbers one through eight, which is why we wired this to pins one through eight, just out work, worked out nicely to number it that way. Um, in the future, if we want to, if it's on different pins or different wires, we can do that with an array of values, but we'll get into that when we get to more coding. So what it does, it turns all eight lights on, then it goes to the next loop and turns them all off. And it does it in a nice slow sequence. If you change your delay value, let me see if I can pull up, oh, I can't pull up both of these. I'm going to, just for fun, edit my delay value. Should I make it go faster or slower? Faster. Faster? Okay. Um, and this is where you can just play. You know, you're not going to hurt anything by trying. It just may not give you the result you're expecting. But that's okay. And why is it not letting me select that? Oh, that's because I'm not in, yeah, I'm in the <laughs> yeah, I'm in the wrong place. Sorry, losing my mind. There we go. This is where we want to go. All right. Um, let me do this. Sorry, this display is a little challenging. I'm going to make my window bigger. By the way, when you copy and paste that code in here. Um, it will sometimes color code it and do some other things in there. Oh, now I'm going to need to switch this back. Let me try and get my display to fit better. Details. Okay, here's my code window. So I'm going to come in here. Um, one thing you may want to do after you copy and paste it is go in Tools tell it to auto format and that will do some indenting and make sure it's color coded correctly and make a little bit more sense of it. So I'm going to go in here and I'll just change my one value to, if I want to make it run faster, do I change the number higher or lower? Lower because it's the delay. Okay. Yep. So let's go with 100. And that's the delay that turns them on. And just to keep it consistent, I'll change the delay value there. Now, if you wanted to change a variable like that in a lot of places, instead of putting a number in here, you would put a variable in. You could put delay value and enter a number to it up in the top. That way you just change it in one place. We don't have a whole lot of code, so that doesn't really matter a whole lot. So let me do this. I'll switch back to this view and I'm going to upload my code. I need to have both windows on here and I'll work on getting all that stuff working together. Let me see if I can add in nope, it's done uploading and you notice here on the side um, it blinked the little lights here 
and um, it started making this move faster. So you can play with that delay value, mess around a little bit. What do you suppose would happen if I changed my delay value or took it out completely? It would be constant. Are you sure? I mean, it would still turn it off, right? On which one? <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in here next to my delay value that I just changed to 100, and I'm going to type two um, backslashes. That actually turns it into a comment. You notice out here, um, I have comments out here of what it's doing, and it always starts with two backslashes. So an easy way to take a line of code out of there, just in case you go, oh, I don't like what that did, or I don't know what that's going to do, is to just comment out that line of code. And now when I upload it, I'm going to see what happens. I took my delay out for turning it on and turning it off. So let me pull this up. It's uploading. And sure enough, it looks like it's on. Um, it is actually turning it off. If you move your Arduino kit really fast or blink your eyes, you can actually see that it is turning off. But it's also turning back on. And there's something that um, we experience as people. It's called persistence of vision, which means you see the image longer than it's actually there. Or if it moves really fast, you don't notice it's um, turning off or changing. And that's what's happening there. So they're not all on. Technically, they are being turned off. Your little microprocessor is running really fast. But the delay value is not noticeable. Um, so tinker with it a little bit. Play with your code a little bit. And um, you know you can save it when you're done if you want to change it with a different name. Um, I would probably stick with the flowing LEDs or the turn light signals just because we'll probably be using code like this in future assignments. Um, and with that, I will let you start to build this project. Now, what I'm looking for on this lesson is in here, you got the code already to copy and paste. And let me pull up the correct screen here. When you have this functional and it's working, and if you need help with your um, USB port or something, there's another picture of it completed on a breadboard. Um, there are three challenges when you go back to the main assignment. We'll just click here. Excuse me. Hopefully that didn't deafen you. So here's going to be your challenges for this one. You have the base code. Oh, oh I want to go back. Oh. Sorry, I can't hear you because I've been deafened. <laughs> yeah, I was a little bit worried about that, but. OK, let me go back to the page I want here. Let's try not to cough. But if you ever tried not to cough, it's like trying not to sneeze. It's not so easy. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so um, once you get the LEDs and you get your flowing lights working correctly, that's basically today's assignment. Your challenges for tomorrow, or if you're bored today because you have the afternoon, um, there's three challenges. I want you to add in two more LEDs. You get 10 of them flashing. Notice those LEDs come in 10 packs, and we only wired and programmed for eight of them. So I want you to get 10 of them flashing in the same pattern. And then, the way I had it wired, my LEDs were flowing upward. I want you to see if you can get it to flow backwards, to get them to flow down. And then here's the big challenge. You're going to have to add quite a bit of lines of code. This one you can just do with modifying lines of code. This one you'll have to modify a little bit of code also. You can't just wire in two more lights, but you have to tell it where they're wired in. Um, this one you're going to have to do some modifications to the greater than, less than, and change the way it counts. Remember how I said that x plus plus will make it count up? Well, x minus minus will make it count down. That's a little hint on that. And then this one here will kind of combine the best of both worlds. I want you to make it flow up and then flow down. Flow up and then flow down. So you're going to have to add a little bit in, copy and paste most of the code, and then edit the portions that you um, think need editing to get that to happen. And then when you think you have everything figured out, and um, 
you're all excited and you feel like you accomplished something, we have a knowledge extraction, aka a quiz. And that will be right here underneath the looping LEDs quiz. And the main thing on here that I want you to learn is kind of how that loop function operates. And that's all I got for you. So I will let you um, turn you loose on this assignment. And I'll also be here online if you need some help. OK, good.